When it comes to toxicology drug testing, it's important to understand whether or not we're discussing initial screening results or definitive confirmatory testing. There are some distinct differences between the two, and we're going to discuss those now. The first step in any toxicology drug test is often an aminoassay screen. Aminoassay screens come in lots of different varieties. They could be the instant point of care cups that are used in the field. Um, it could also be laboratory based screening, uh, which has a little bit wider variety of test options and can also be applied to uh, serum and hair routinely to oral fluid and urine. In either case, uh, these, sample these tests are often performed directly on the sample, meaning sample preparation is not always required. Um, they, the tests are, generally speaking, less specific than confirmatory testing. What we mean by that is these are drug class determinations. We're determining whether or not an opioid is present or a benzodiazepine is present. We don't necessarily know which specific drug within that class is in our sample, but we know there's a, there's a drug present of that class. That's what we mean by specificity. These, these tests are also a little bit less sensitive than confirmatory testing. What we mean by that is it requires a little bit more drug in a sample to produce a positive result than, than, than we would see with a confirmatory test. These results are also qualitative. So whenever we make a, 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 a result determination, it's simply positive or negative. There's no concentration, no drug concentration associated with these tests. An important consideration is that immunoassay screens do not differentiate between parent drugs and metabolites. Another important uh, concern when interpreting these results. If there's a question about whether or not an individual might be you know, scraping the pill and putting it into a sample versus actually consuming the drug, metabolizing it in the liver and then excreting it. Right? Those are determinations that can be made with confirmatory testing, not with immunoassay screening because here we're not differentiating between the two. And lastly, there are cross-reactivity considerations. That can be a good thing in the case of a broad drug screen where we might have multiple opioids that are potentially being prescribed. We want a screen that could pick up on all of them. So we want broad cross-reactivity there. But we could also have scenarios where completely unrelated drugs are triggering positive results on a screen because of unwanted cross-reactivity. So because of these concerns, these assays can be subjected to false positive results and sometimes false negative results. And we have a, a subsequent video that will we'll discuss some of these issues. Uh, turning to the confirmatory testing, we use liquid chromatography mass spectrometry, LCMS, for our confirmatory tests. GCMS, gas chromatography, is also another valid technique analogous to what we're going to discuss here today. These techniques are referred to as the platinum standard. These are as definitive as we get. These results are defensible. Um, sample preparation is required in these cases. So we're, we're taking our specimens, we're extracting the drugs from those specimens and analyzing them. These assays are highly specific, right? So we are using a, a technique known as chromatography to separate all of the drugs from one another. You can see that on this top graph, all these peaks represent individual drugs that will be present in a sample. Uh, and we're one by one identifying them by a technique known as mass spectrometry, where we're, we're measuring the, the molecular weight of that compound. We're breaking the compound apart into individual fragments and measuring the weights of all those fragments. And that technique provides what I like to call a molecular fingerprint. Uh, and that gives us a definitive result. We know definitively that that is the drug present in the sample. You know, there, there's virtually no such thing as a false positive on a confirmatory technique. Uh, these tests are more sensitive than screening tests, so we can detect much lower concentrations of drugs. Because we use chromatography to separate out all the components, we are able to distinguish a parent drug from its metabolites. And lastly, these results are quantitative. We will provide a concentration of that drug, which can be helpful in distinguishing trace concentrations versus significant concentrations. And then lastly, let's take a look at a final report just to show how that appears on our results. Here, if we look at the opioid section, we have our opioid screen listed, a simple positive qualitative result. Our methodology is EIA, which stands for enzyme aminoassay and then our cutoff of 300 nanogram per mil. Below that, we have the definitive confirmation, the individual drugs, morphine, hydromorphone, codeine, and so forth. 
with the numerical quantitative results, those, the concentration in that sample. We have our LCMSMS methodology and our cutoffs, which as you can see are often lower than our screening test because it is a more sensitive technique. So hopefully that gives you a general overview of our FANA reports and the differences between screening and confirmatory techniques.